this morning I don't want to review the whole concept of radiotherapy for mesothelioma, but I'd like to focus on a new area with some uh, data we have uh, both from Australia and from uh, Memorial on uh, using high-dose radiotherapy to treat the whole hemithorax of patients who may or may not have had a pneumonectomy. This is some uh, survival data from the cancer registry where I work in Victoria. As you heard from Ken, Australia has one of the highest incidences in the world of mesothelioma. And uh, this slide looks at five-year survival of patients who were diagnosed between 1990 and 2004, showing that there's been no overall improvement in uh, each five-year group. There may be some improvement in one or two years, but at the end, the failure rate is just as high as it was in patients diagnosed now or back in 1990. Now, where I work, there are about 10 thoracic surgeons who operate on mesothelioma patients. I work with six of them, and none of them have been doing pneumonectomies over this time frame. We introduced chemotherapy with permetrexel in 2008 because that's when the Australian government subsidised it. Now, you'll be familiar with this uh, pattern of treatment of patients diagnosed with mesothelioma. Basically, patients who are regarded as operable have an option, depending on the patient and the surgeon, of having an extra pleural pneumonectomy or pleurectomy decortication. And uh, they may have chemotherapy before or after surgery. These patients here, with the lung removed, often are given radiotherapy to the chest cavity but that's not used in patients who go through this process. Inoperable patients have supportive care, often with pruridesis, and they may have factored in at some stage in their course chemotherapy or possibly radiotherapy. Now, this is a large study from um, Memorial Sloan Kettering, which follows uh, almost 1,000 patients treated there between 1990 and 2005. And the four lines here represent patients who have had EPP, pyrectomy decortication, exploratory thoracotomy, or just open and close. And when you do a statistical ana analysis, there's a significant benefit in the patients who've had these two radical procedures as opposed to these. However, if you then subdivide the 350 patients in these two curves into those who had basic surgery or those who had the addition of multimodality treatment, you can see that median survival is improved from 10 to 20 months. And the multimodality group uh, over this time span more likely had uh, radiotherapy rather than chemotherapy. Now, this is how I see the problem of dealing with mesothelioma. It's a disease that uh, develops in the pleura of the lung and it spreads locally. It invades into the lung, it involves through our, through, uh, beyond the pleura into the chest wall, into the di uh, below the diaphragm, into the abdominal cavity into the organs in the chest and into the mediastinum and other lung. And the problem with surgery is that we can't take out all of the uh, cancer cells at the periphery of the lung and there's a high risk of local recurrence. And what I'm trying to do is establish local control in these type of patients. Now if uh, this is a cancer that occurs in the breast, in the brain, uh, in the lung, and the surgery isn't complete, we eradicate the minor disease outside the uh, surgical field by radiotherapy. And uh, what I've been trying to do is establish local regional control in the thorax by radiation and try to maintain it as long as we can. And uh, to do this, I've used the most modern technology with advances in radiotherapy to give the highest dose possible with acceptable toxicity. And the problem with radiotherapy in the past is that it's uh, using older methods that were developed 20 years ago, the toxicity was considerable and the results weren't adequately assessed because unless you uh, do more sophisticated uh, analysis than uh, chest x-rays or CAT scans, it's hard to appreciate the minor changes on the basis on the background of fibrosis. This is a patient who presented with a uh, mesothelioma back in... 2007, had a left pyrectomy decortication and the following year chemotherapy for relapse. 
And when I saw him, he had a CT scan that looked like this. There was a mass sticking out of his chest wall, and the hemithorax was grossly infiltrated around the pleura with mesothelioma. I did, gave him a five-week course of radiotherapy to all of this, and this is his scan two months later, where you can see this quite considerable regression in uh, the tumour around the edges, and the mediastinum has moved across to the uh, normal side. Now, I don't know what proportion of mesothelioma patients have radiation-sensitive disease, but uh, with patients like this, it seems an area that we should explore more closely to see if we can get these sorts of responses. What's often not appreciated is that radiotherapy's made major inroads over the last 20 years with new technology. And I've listed some of the uh, methods here that we're now adopting. When most of the studies of radiotherapy for mesothelioma were done, they were using X-ray films, a very primitive planning and treatment delivery. We've now gone from uh, two-dimensional radiotherapy to three-dimensional, where we use conformal radiotherapy. Uh, we have much better linear accelerators and treatment uh, planning systems. We're using CT scans in all of our patients of pan so we can avoid normal tissues much more accurately. We immobilise patients so they don't move very much on the machine. And now we're also using image guidance techniques where we use PET scans as well for the uh, CT, which allows for respiratory movement and uh, imaging uh, during treatment with cone beam CT and a lot of other algorithms which I don't have time to go into. So the centre I work in has got an experience that dates back to 1998 using pleurocomedy with photodynamic, uh, with, uh, with phototherapy using HPD. 140 patients and this is a typical survival curve. Now, when I came along, we decided to try to improve this by treating the local control in uh, patients who uh, were referred after this modality. And basically, we had patients like this with the disease outlined on a PET scan showing a uh, nodule here in the scar. And this was the area of active disease that I included in the radiotherapy field. This is going back to 2003. So I gave this uh, volume a dose of uh, 60 gray and followed up by PET scans uh, a few months afterwards. So this is a PET scan done four months later, and I've been able to analyse the PET scans by using a program that looks at the total glycolytic volume, which basically in uh, three dimensions outlines the area with the high activity uh, and allows you to compare the numbers before and after treatment. So in this case, it went from 382 to 80, and that's a 78% reduction in activity on the PET scan in the area that had the high dose radiotherapy at four months. Now, the problem with using PET scans is that some patients develop an inflammation of the lung in the radiotherapy field, and this patient uh, had a similar course to the first one, but you can see where the radiation field is outlined here, and this is radiation pneumonitis. The numbers went up very high, and on a PET scan that was done nine months after the second one, the numbers went down, but it's still too high to accurately interpret. So uh, we've now analysed 14 patients treated since 2003, and I've been able to obtain follow-up PET scans in all of the patients. So there's 40 PET scans. They were, the initial one was done for planning or before surgery. The second one was done usually between three and six months after their radiotherapy, and some have been done up to five years later. The patients in the cohort were mainly males with right-sided disease, epithelioid. The staging I've used here was PET staging because uh, only one patient had a pneumonectomy, and uh, these show that most of them had advanced stage three or four in 10 out of the 14 cases. 11 had peripheral decortication, one EPP, and two were too advanced to have surgery, and only four patients have had chemotherapy. And uh, all of them uh, had progressed on chemotherapy before they had the radiotherapy. So this is another patient I treated uh, about six years ago. We uh, treated the area here similar to the others. Follow-up PET scans showed that the activity went down from 800 to 600 to 400 to 104 at five years later. And this was the only patient who uh, 
had uh, toxicity, we had developed some transient uh, liver necrosis as the radiation field crossed over the liver using the older techniques with 3D conformal radiotherapy. We don't see this anymore now that we use intensity modulated radiotherapy. Uh, when we did the PET scan five years later, he had a hotspot up here, which was outside the radiotherapy field, and I then submitted him for chemotherapy, and I've given him a second course of radiotherapy to the upper part of the lung, and he's alive and well uh, following that. Now, uh, we've had one patient with a psychomatoid mesothelioma that we had these two areas of disease which were inoperable because they were both invading ribs and this one, one was invading the uh, n nerves in the brachial plexus. So I, I, he had a course of 60 gray for both of those regions and this is his follow-up PET scan showing radiation pneumonitis and then uh, a year after the course was delivered uh, he uh, developed metastasis in the other side. This area I'll come back to later but he's had excellent local control with 60 gray for this very aggressive type of uh, mesothelioma. And if you look at the x-rays, this is how he presented uh, originally before radiotherapy. This is two months later. You can't see the uh, superior mass because it's shielded by the ribs. But if you just focus on this area here, you can see just how fast and well this has responded to high dose radiotherapy. Uh, and on this one, uh, you can see radiation fibrosis has set in, but this is the thing that killed him, the tumour on the other side, which didn't respond to chemotherapy when it was given. Uh, we've treated one patient who had an, an EPP. We had some delay in planning his radiotherapy. So after he had his surgery, he had chemotherapy. And when he had his simulation PET scan, he had an area where the disease had come back here. So we gave a whole hemithorax a dose uh, over five weeks. Uh, here, and you can see this is the area that got boosted to 60 gray. This was delivered safely. The level of uh, TGB went from 170 to 7, and he's still alive three years later with no recurrence in any area. So this is a time course of the patients we have treated and, and analysed so far. The timing of radiotherapy was here, this is uh, looking at years uh, before and after the radiotherapy. There's two six-year survivors. Uh, the, re the average time between having a diagnosis and, and surgery in this series was six months, and it was another six months before they were referred on average after surgery for radiotherapy. And the white circles here are the timing of all the PET scans that we've been able to do. So there's five patients still alive. The early patients only had part of the lung treated and uh, they didn't survive very long. And this is the, the summary of the total glycolytic volume reductions in the patients who were valuable. So there's, these weren't because they had radiation pneumonitis, but of all of these patients, you can see that the uh, median reduction in TGV was 67%. And that's uh, on patients who've been followed up on an average of 18 months after radiotherapy. These are the tolerance doses that we use. The problem with giving these types of radiotherapy is that it's often difficult to avoid toxicity. And the main thing that we're very concerned about is giving significant doses to the contralateral lung. So uh, uh, these were the doses that we used as a maximum constraints and uh, we managed to achieve it. Uh, the last five cases we've done have had uh, IMRT which has made it a lot easier to treat the disease around the edge of the liver in right-sided mesothelioma patients with avoiding uh, any uh, significant toxicities. And these are the toxicities that uh, uh, we've found based on uh, version 4 of this. These are the common side effects most patients having lung radiotherapy experience. The grading system goes from zero, which is no side effects, to five, which is uh, death from radiation uh, therapy. And all of these have had grades one, two, and three. We've had no four or five toxicities uh, in any of these patients. Now, uh, one of the problems is that we had local recurrences. Uh, this is an early patient who developed a recurrence up here in the falciform ligament, and you can see that was outside the area that we gave a high dose to. And this is the patient I 
showed you earlier, who had a recurrence in the area adjacent to the spinal cord after having brachial plexus involvement, and that uh, area uh, was only given uh, below 45 gray, and that was the only bit that uh, wasn't controlled for one year after radiotherapy. So based on the patterns of uh, relapses and the fact that we had minimal toxicity, we decided to increase the volume of disease that we irradiated. And since January last year, we've treated uh, three patients on this study who've had the whole hemithorax treated with doses of uh, 50 grays. So this is a PET scan done for planning. You can see the high uh, activity areas at the apex of the lung, around the diaphragm. It was also into the interlobar fissures in the mediastinal lymph nodes. The whole volume received 60 gray, and, sorry, 50 gray, and the areas outlined in blue had a boost at the same time of 60 gray. And here you can see in three dimensions how the treatment was planned. And then at three months afterwards on the PET scan, you can see that all of those hot spots have become inactive. And this has been maintained for about a year. So based on our experience, although there were small numbers, we followed them all uh, assiduously and uh, found that we've been able to deliver high doses of radiotherapy effectively using modern techniques with minimal toxicities. And the total glycolytic volume reduction is two-thirds of the original activity. The local control in these patients is 71%. And all of the, the four patients who did experience local failure had, uh, in three cases, biphasic disease, uh, often with T4 tumours, and uh, they all developed uh, metastases distantly at the same time as they had the local recurrences. And some of those have had uh, uh, second lots of radiotherapy for distant metastases. The median survival of the series is 26 months, uh, with an 18-month median after um, radiotherapy. So I think this shows that mesothelioma should now be regarded as a tumour which is sensitive to radiotherapy and giving doses around 50 to 60 gray can produce long-term local control. It can be now delivered safely to large volumes using modern techniques including intensity modulated radiotherapy and I think should be considered for many more cases uh, in uh, early disease as well as late disease where it's very effective for palliation and uh, we're getting some more experience here, and uh, as Ken will present next, using this in patients who have the lung intact, selected patients. <laughs>